for tuning in to Mount Calvary Holy Church Family Worship Center with Bishop Alvin Mickens. Please enjoy this series of We just again want to say wonderful morning to everyone. Man, co-pastor and I want to continue to say that we love you and we appreciate you and the Mount Calvary Holy Church family. Amen. Appreciate you because we're here in the great city of Concord, North Carolina. And we welcome you again to join in with us for our hour of power. Glory to God. Again, I honor the powerful set woman of this house. Amen. Co-Pastor Mickens, my friend, my confidant. Amen. In, amen in marriage. And I thank God for her today, for all of the staff that are here today, our ministerial staff, our leadership staff. Certainly, amen, our media staff, we thank God for you because we could not do what we do without you. Amen. And we honor you and all of our members that are listening to us. We thank God for you. Amen. And for our friends and guests that are listening, amen, near and far. God bless you. Right now, we get ready to get into the word of God. So let's be continue in prayer as we prepare our hearts, amen, to hear what the Lord wants to say to us. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise today. You are such an awesome and a wonderful God. Thank you for your purpose. Thank you for your presence. And we know that you never come without purpose and you never come without reasoning. And so that for not reason. So God, for that very cause, we ask that you will, God, continue to breathe into this place a fresh anointing. God, that will cause teaching and ministry to be easy. God, for this word that you want to deliver among your people. God, you've already prepared our hearts now. Now allow this vessel to be used so that, God, you can use it the way you want to use it as meat for the master's use. And we say thank you. God, we pray that we don't speak out of our, you know, just emotions, God, but that we speak out of the sentiments of your heart, and we give you glory. So we declare, God, near and far, that the entrance of thy word will give light and understanding to all of us, and we will give you glory, we will give you honor, and we will give you praise in Jesus' wonderful and matchless name. Come on, let's just give him one more round of applause. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Because we're in a powerful year, 2020. Glory to God. And we have decreed, I'm sorry, 2021. Amen. And we have decreed that this is going to be a year that is going to be epic. It's going to be a year of epic transformation. It's going to be a year that's going to, we're going to see some impressive things. We're going to see some remarkable things. It's going to be a year where God, amen, is going to expand us. He's going to move us to another place. It's going to be a year that God said we're going to experience some dramatic, amen, change in form and appearance. I, I, I'm so excited, amen. This is a year that God is going to change the structure of our lives and change the structure of the church and change the infrastructure of the church. And we just give God praise today. Uh, it, 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 it just won't leave my heart. It just won't leave my spirit. So I'm going to continue, continue to, amen, release it as God has uh, impressed upon my heart because it is God's desire in this time of ep epic transformation that we're going to become transformers. Glory to God. We're going to become transformers where he's going to do some changing of our form. Glory to God. And we praise God for that because how many feel God is already doing it? God is already changing some things, even in this 
this first month, amen, of January, God has already started the changing process. And I'm excited about it. So again, we want to focus our attention, amen, upon, upon our lesson scriptures, uh, which is our foundation scripture. One of, one of them is going to be our foundation scripture. And the other is going to be a paraphrasing scripture that I want to use that I think God really wants to speak to us even in a deeper way concerning uh, transformation. So we're going to be speaking out of the New Testament, coming from the New Testament, the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the Old Testament, we're going to go to our foundation scripture, and that is in Exodus 40, verses 1 and verse 2. And I'm going to read that in the New Living Translation. And then we're going to slide to the New Testament, and we're going to come from Acts, the 15th chapter, uh, verses 14 through verse uh, 18. So let's read the scripture and see what the Lord says. So, so Exodus 40, 1 and 2. Uh, then the Lord said to Moses, set up the tabernacle on the first day of the new year, on the first day of the new year. So I want, so God is saying to Moses, I need you to set it up. I need you to set up the tabernacle as we begin this year, uh, as we look toward, if you look toward what I want to do for you in this year, the first thing you've got to do is set up the tabernacle. And then when we go to Acts 15, verse 14 and 18, the Bible says Simeon, uh, Simon, Simon uh, has declared how God at the, fir at, at, at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And uh, to this agree uh, the words of the prophets as it is written. After this... I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up that the resident, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom the name, my name is called, saith the Lord, who does all these things. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we want to continue in, in sharing with you uh, our subtopic, Prepare for Epic Transformation. Uh, this is part three, Prepare for Epic Transformation. In the contrast of the scripture, uh, these two scriptures, it, it is ironic uh, that one deals with an external deliverance and the other deals with an internal deliverance, which I believe that in this time of transformation, not only are we going to experience an external deliverance, but we're also going to uh, experience an internal deliverance. Uh, uh, when you talk about an external deliverance in Exodus, uh, the Hebrew people are getting delivered uh, externally or physically from Egypt. But when you go to Acts, it is the early uh, Christians uh, that are getting delivered uh, internally from the legalistic tr uh, translation of the doctrine of the Old Testament uh, by those that were Pharisees. So they were considered as uh, Phariseans, Christians uh, at the church at Antioch. Uh, they, they, they rose up against those Christians great leaders in those days and, and they tried to impress upon them and to teach the people about the Old Testament in a way that it was legalistic, in a way that it kept them bound. In other words, they were saying that you couldn't be saved until you got circumcised. Uh, and so the church council had to come up, had to stand up for who they, who they were, for who they were and stand up and come together uh, to be able to combat those and continue to convert those that hadn't got fully converted because their mindset was to cause uh, some ripple in the church inter internally. And so they came up and they sought counsel and they decided to a man to address the issue so that those that have come out of a way of Pharisee can really get a true translation of what God was trying to do. 
And he was, and when they when they stood up in the self righteous indignation, they persuaded them and said, "The Old Testament is just a shadow of things to come." Uh, but now we're living in a new time when that which the Old Testament spoke about has come to pass. So you don't need to do rituals uh, to come and to know Jesus. Hallelujah. So 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 there was some internal problems, uh, uh, but God was yet trying to deliver the church uh, from inter internal situations. And, and I believe in this time of transformation, God is not only going to work from the outside in, but God is going to work from the inside out out. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. Oh, you're going to see a transformation of the church. Now, when I say the church, I'm talking about the saints. I'm talking about uh, those that are believers. I'm talking about those that are born again, those that are filled with the Holy Ghost. Because even though you're filled with the Holy Ghost, there's still room for deliverance. Can I get a witness? Oh, no, no. We're not there yet, baby. Hallelujah. You won't get there until you meet Jesus for yourself. But while you're on your way, glory to God, we always need a little more deliverance. Uh, hallelujah. So not only is God going to deliver us uh, uh, physically, uh, amen, but God is going to deliver us internally. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. So therefore, that's why I want to approach this word uh, transformation from a different uh, perspective from how we have been teaching in the past. I'm not saying that the past was wrong, but I just want to bring a little more clarity to what God wants to say concerning uh, epic transformation. Mm -hmm. So we want to explore, amen, not only this word transformation, but we want to look at the intrinsic nature of it. Uh, uh, the, we want to look at the character of this word called transformation transformation. Glory to God. And I ask God to reveal, amen, this to me in such a distinctive way. And God said to me, uh, transformation simply means changing your formation. Glory to God. And I say, thank you, Lord. I, I got it now. You, you, you know, you gave me some more insight. So if I'm going to continue to transform, I've got to change my formation. Yes, I do. Amen. I've got to change it according to the plan of God. I've got to change it according to the plan of God. And we have to change according to the plan of God if we're going to continue to be named his people and the church. So uh, just for a quick insight, when you talk about transformation, it simply means to change uh, your, uh, 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 not only just your destiny, but it means to change uh, to your true purpose, your, your true assignment uh, in, in, in life. So as we continue to flow in this month, amen, of 2021, we want to approach this word transformation again from uh, the components of translation, rotation, reflection, and dilation. Glory to God. And so we want to again jump into uh, translation as it relates to transformation. Glory to God, because we're, we're in uh, translate, we, we need to translate the process of what God is really talking about when he says, uh, ep when he speaks to us concerning epic transformation. Uh, so when you talk about translation, it simply means to interpret, to interpret the language and the image of something to move it from one place to another or to move a set people from one place to another or from one point to another. Really, it means to get a better understanding, to get an understanding uh, on a level of, 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 of comprehension so that it would be a lot clearer. Remember, God is all about moving his people from one point or one place or one level to another. That's why he says in his scripture that he moves us from faith 
to faith because God does not want us to remain in a place. He wants us to continue to progress forward. Don't you know we serve a forward God? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. God is all about moving things forward forward. Uh, in fact, uh, when uh, God spoke about, uh, uh, about uh, things that are behind us, he said to the apostle Paul to tell them uh, just to forget it. He said, if they, he said, if you're going to move forward, you got to forget those things that are behind. Uh, so what, I, what, what he's saying is, is that we got to forget some things from last year. Uh -huh. I, 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 I can't allow uh, uh, some of the stuff from last year uh, uh, to continue to tag me in this year. I, I can't continue, amen, to, to allow those attitudes, uh, uh, those, uh, those temperaments uh, to, to continue to move me and control me from last year. I, I can't continue to allow those bad habits, uh, glory to God, to tag and to hang on to me and to cleave to me in this new year. I, I, I've got to come to the point that I've got to forget them. I've I, I got to let them go. It, it, look at somebody and say, we got to let them go. So I, I just want to encourage somebody, just let it go, glory to God, and don't worry about it. God got this, uh, glory to God. You, I, I just want somebody to know you got to let it go. Uh, you got to stop worrying about it because God got it anyway. Tell somebody, say, God got it anyway. And so we have to look at what God is really doing and what he really wants to do in this moment and in this time as we continue to move forward. So just to highlight a few things again about this tabernacle, God made and constructed this tabernacle. He wanted to construct it to allow his people to experience a personal preparation for epic transformation. Why? Because God wanted to restore the respect and the honor and the access into his very presence. And lastly, God wanted to, uh, his, wanted to allow his people uh, the opportunity and the advantage to experience uh, a, a portable and a mobile way of worshiping and ministering and serving as they travel uh, through life and, and th as they would experience uh, different challenges in life. So this, this particular tabernacle is not just something that we read and just put aside, but, but it's something that represents uh, not only in the days before us, but it represents now in the time that we are even in this year of 2021. We found out, amen, as we highlight just quickly that if you're going to flow within the order of how God was telling his people in this particular text, there was some prerequisites. And we tapped on them. We got into them uh, 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 last week. And those prerequisites were God wants you to listen. God wants you to receive. God wants you to obey. God wants you to, uh, to follow instructions. And then God wants you to build what he instructs you to build or in some cases, he wants you to rebuild for relevant results. Uh, we spend a lot of time trying to gain. Uh, we spend a lot of time rebuilding things uh, uh, for self gain in life, but uh, uh, which is less, which is less to the benefits of others. What God wants us to understand that we are now called to build His church and to build our life so that it will be be a relevant result to someone else. Uh, see, you see, uh, what we are missing is that this, this relevant result is simply the principles and the conduct uh, 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 that, that creates an opportunity uh, to bring a resolve to problems in life. If, amen, this world and if this nation is, is ever going to seek some resolve, it, it's got to look back to God. It's got to look back to the representative of God 
It's got to look back to the church. In other words, if they're going to find uh, some resolve to all this frustration and this hatred and all of this anger, they, they've got to find somebody, amen, that will, ri that will raise up a standard, somebody that would give an example of how to live a decent and respectable life. Uh, how to live a life of peace and joy. Can I get a witness? Because this world and this nation has become so sensual and so emotional and so caught up in emotions and all kind of rhetoric uh, that, 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 that we don't see and we don't experience times of peace like we used to. Uh, you know, amen, we used to have peaceful neighborhoods. We used to have peaceful families. Can I get a witness? Uh, amen. But now, families are confused. Uh, neighborhoods are confused. Uh, uh, cultures are confused. Uh, this nation is confused uh, because it's crying uh, for some type of resolve. As a matter of fact, God speaks from heaven in the scripture and he says to the people of God, he says, I hear the sighing of the prisoner. Uh, there are some people, amen, that, that are in this nation, that are around us every day, there is a sign, uh, there is a sound beyond the sound, uh, it's a sound beyond their face, it's a sound beyond their actions, it's a sound that we need to understand, that the sound that says, I am in prison and I need help, I need somebody to show me the light, somebody to show me the way, I done spend my money, I done been to the psychiatrist but I still didn't get everything I needed uh, and, and I need something internally that's going to help me mentally can I get a witness because no matter how much we get help mentally it's really, it really goes back to the eternal it really goes back to our spirit it really goes back to the spirit man because if you don't get the spirit man in control you can never get the mental man in control and there will never be a time that you can get the physical man in control you ought to lift your hands in your home and in the sanctuary and say Lord we need help <laughs> the Lord. I pray that you enjoyed this wonderful teaching by our Bishop Elvin Mickens. Please join us next week as we conclude.